Olá pessoal, I hope that you guys are doing well and I hope that the peace of God is within you, over your household, with your family and I just hope that you guys are having such a good day and that everything is just going according to God's will, not your will but definitely God's will. So I am here with my beautiful friend. A lot of you guys like were telling me please ask her to have a YouTube channel, please, please, please. So I am here with my friend Gadli and we are about to speak about something that I have touched on and on the video I spoke about the the what's it called the um, uh it's running away from me we uh, we spoke I was speaking about you know the pressure of marriage the pressure of kinder marriage and that sometimes we think the pressure and when God tells us to prepare it's all about do we know how to cook do we know how to do this do we know how to take care of the house and like i mentioned from what i have seen is that that won't keep your marriage together that can complement you know your marriage yeah. but it won't keep your marriage together so i've had my i'm having my friend here with us and she is gonna speak to us concerning that you know she's just gonna drop some wisdom and speak to the married people speak to the people that are like me on this journey going to get married so yeah so let my friend introduce herself a little <laughs> Kathy introduce yourself I don't even know what to say <laughs> <laughs> putting me on the spot <laughs> hi everyone I'm so excited um, to be here I think you know what Jess has done with this platform is really incredible so well done friend on your obedience to what God has instructed you to do I think you inspire so many of us to just, you know, keep seeking the wisdom from the Holy Spirit and just to be led uh, into the purpose that God has designed for us. But yeah, like I say, I'm Kazefa, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I work, <laughs> I'm a friend, I'm a daughter, I'm so many uh, things. But yeah, most of all, I think I am a kingdom influencer. Yes, yes. And, you know, I'm so passionate about all things word all things pertaining to kingdom marriages as well so yeah i hope that we can have a fun day today and just uh, share as much um godly wisdom as yes. we can yeah um so guys before we carry on and before we start let me just say katli and i are in the car we are heading somewhere but i really felt that this was the best time and i felt peace with us just recording this while we were in the car we had planned to do a video but i didn't feel peace with that and right now i just feel peace so holy spirit just have your way holy spirit do what you need to do yeah. may you use me may you use Cutley the way that you want to and may we only say you know what it is that you want us to say and may the words that we speak go according to the need of your people go according to your will nothing of our flesh nothing of us just trying to please other people's flesh and comfort their flesh but may it be just you speaking and you having your way in the mighty and powerful name of jesus christ amen 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 so friend um let me ask you first let me ask you do you believe you are in a kingdom marriage <laughs> Absolutely, I do have the peace of God um, that has led me into the marriage that I'm in. And sometimes I know it's very, it's not popular, but when you are faced with a lot of challenges sometimes, or you get a lot of attacks in terms of like the spiritual realm mm -hmm. within your relationship or within your marriage, that's when you know you're actually heading the right direction because mm -hmm. if it wasn't godly then the devil wouldn't try his best to bring all sorts of like challenges your way mm -hmm. so honestly i do feel you know i've been it's, it was prophesied uh, my mom had a few dreams about it we had a few confirmations you know i did pray before yeah. i got married to him it's not something that i just <laughs> picked up from my emotions but i do believe that this is the will of god and this is a kingdom marriage amen and um friend i am sure that before you got married mm -hmm. there were expectations that you had you know you like there were pictures that were going in your head you know yeah. there were expectations things that you envisioned uh -huh. once you got into kinder marriage was it all that 
absolutely not. <laughs> I had envisioned all the fluffy, beautiful, uh, you know, roses and all the fancy stuff, which are there, but it's not the prime. Um, you know, it's not what dominates the relationship. So obviously, you do have expectations of you know the cuddling and the lovey, you know, conversations yeah. and the romance, which is great. Mm-hmm. But it's far bigger than that. You know, yeah. there's it's a bigger assignment. Um, there's so much that goes into marriage. There's so much that you get into the marriage and you're like, oh my god, this is completely different to what I thought it would be. So definitely, the expectations yeah. were there, but it's not entirely when you get when I got into it. It wasn't entirely what I had expected it to be. Yeah. And how was your preparation before you got married? Oh my God. I feel like I always wanted to get married from a young age. You know, Jess, you know, Mm -hmm. I've always been very like family orientated. I've always wanted like a big family. I'm 29. (laughs) But I wanted to get married young. So I got married at like 22, which was great. And I had prepared myself for that because I wasn't living a very wild lifestyle. You know, I was very like, my my life was very much school, church, home, you know, few friends. I had a very small circle. And like, I would listen to a lot of Miles Monroe when I was in a varsity. I used to listen to a lot of Paula White, you know, who inspired me a lot in how they approach the topic of marriage, especially Miles. So I do think I was quite prepared. And I, I, I spent a lot of time with my mom. And she would literally deliberately train us to how to carry ourselves, you know. So I I do think I got a lot of deliberate training. It was not something that was not intentional. I was intentional. I would listen to marriage sermons. I would listen to marriage conferences even when I wasn't married. Mm -hmm. So I did get myself kind of ready in my mind and started preparing my spirit for that. And and when you speak about deliberate training, how was the deliberate training? What would mom like have you guys do? I think most of it was spiritual, you know, mom taught us how to, she really showed that we were women of prayer, mm-hmm. we were women of the word, you know, even how we carried ourselves, it wasn't much the cleaning and the cooking, honestly, because mm-hmm. I never liked cooking, I used to cry when mom would ask me to cook, <laughs> and I'd be like, I'm going to marry a rich man, we're going to have a chef, yeah. and like, sorry, we're not yeah. doing this, so yeah. it wasn't really the, the chores. Mm-hmm. But more how to carry yourself, character, you know. She told us about forgiveness. She told us about unconditional love. She told us about um, how, how to serve your in-laws, how to serve people. We always had people in our house, you know, Jess. You know, my mom's house, that's one house that has traffic. My cousins yeah. were always there. <laughs> like, there were always people. So that taught us to serve, you know. Yeah. You're always serving, giving the best of yourself. So that was part of, I think, the training that she gave us. And we spent a lot of time in prayer. We worshipped a lot. We went to a lot of conferences. I would miss classes because I was at church, you know. (laughs) So that's what I'm talking about when I say I think she was very deliberate in how she prepared us. uh, Especially our spirits to kind of serve in marriage and to be in a marriage. So, yeah. Um, Friend, I had mentioned that, you know, especially... Um, I can't say this for the other part of the world, but let yeah. me speak for South Africa and Angola. Mm-hmm. Being a wife is you, you know, taking care of your home, the cleaning, the food, especially, you know, cooking. Yeah. Um, you When you meet your in-laws or when you go to a function, mm-hmm. the Makoti needs to know how to do certain things. You Absolutely. know, you need to be in the kitchen. You need to do all of that. Yeah. And I was saying that, you know, um, it got to a point where I was feeling a lot of that pressure yeah. because it was like, oh my gosh, I need to know how to do this. I need to know how to do that. And not only know that you need to perfect it yeah. because it has taught that that is what will sustain your marriage. Yeah. That was what will get you a husband and that was what will get you and your husband to stay together, right? That mm. was what would... Um, keep you guys together yes god would be there but this is the physical stuff yeah. that would keep you guys together yeah and i started seeing that not only myself but other women were falling into this trap of perfecting these things mm-hmm. that it wasn't enough just you knowing how to cook you had to be the best chef yeah you no know? you had to be like the best <laughs> it wasn't enough you knowing how to clean you had to clean that house like to the T, like yeah. you had to be spotless. Yeah. But then God started showing me how many people were actually good at that. Mm. Mm. 
it landed up in divorce. So, how many people were actually, I'm gonna say this, good in bed with yeah. their spouse, yeah. but still landed up in divorce? Absolutely. And not to take away and say that this isn't important, it mm. is. Mm -hmm. I think it complements the marriage. Yeah. I can even go as further as uh, uh, um, I can go further and say that it will bring that man home. Yeah, he can have someone else, but if you are a good wife, you know how to cook, you know how to take care of his stuff, mm. you can satisfy him sexually. Yeah. that will bring him. Yeah, back but will home. it sustain? But will it sustain? Mm. Will it maintain him there forever? Will it make him say? This is what I really want. Like, I am going to stay with this person. Yeah. And God showed me no. That's why in the previous video I spoke about the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. And like you said, one thing that mom deliberately taught you guys mm. was character. Absolutely. And character has to do with the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Character has to do with allowing these fruits to actually grow and show in your life. Yeah. So how did you navigate this whole thing where it came? to marriage yeah um i think that you need to be very in tune with the holy spirit right mm -hmm. and really not be led by the flesh mm -hmm. you need to learn how to tune into the fruit of the spirit right mm -hmm. you need to learn so many uh you learn about yourself firstly let me start there marriage teaches you about yourself and where you where you're triggered mm -hmm. and where your weaknesses are mm -hmm. and where you need to pay attention and a lot of the times is when something is done to you yeah. and then how you respond kind of tells you uh, where you're at, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of your tolerance, your self-control, your forgiveness, your ability to say, I'm sorry, yeah. your ability to say I was wrong, you know, mm -hmm. taking accountability and actually doing something about that. So I feel like that's a lot of uh, fruit of the spirit, you know, it's, it's, it's how Christ lived his life. In that I love how he likens um, the church to his bride. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? Because the the, the, the comparison is so spot on. Yeah. Because for you to make it in marriage, you need those qualities. Yeah. You need to have unconditional love. You need to have forgiveness. You have to have self-control. You need to be gentle. You know, your speech has to be seasoned with gentleness, mm -hmm. you know. So those are some things that I had to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, how to forgive quickly. I know the world says you're entitled to be angry. Yeah. No, the word of God says be angry, but don't sin. Yeah. And don't let the, 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 the sun come out, you know, while being angry. Mm -hmm. That is fine-tuning your character. Yeah. That is teaching you that, yeah, I can be angry so long as I, I don't sin. That means self-control. How do I control yeah. my anger? How do I not say things that will jeopardize yeah my relationship with my partner you know mm -hmm. so it's a lot of work and those aren't things that grow overnight you have to be very honest with yourself if you're a selfish person how do you start being you know not selfish mm -hmm. and how do you start tapping into that meekness that humility that the word of god talks about if you know those are real conversations that only you can have with yourself that yeah. no one else can really like say they can say oh you're this type of person but until you own it and you say that's my weakness and i have to grow in that area then that's how your marriage will start like you know feeding off like what you're putting mm -hmm. into it so i do believe that for you to flourish in your marriage or for me what has made it great for us is being able to understand the fruit of the spirit and actually apply those qualities whenever someone is falling short or someone has a weakness in something how do we keep reminding ourselves to say was I kind in that situation? Did I display mercy for him? Am I forgiving? Am I showing meekness? You know, am I engaging the Holy Spirit to fix my character mm -hmm. so that I'm not the problem in our relationship? Okay. Yeah. And um, if mom had not, you know, worked with you guys deliberately on your character, mm -hmm. how do you think marriage would have been for you, especially those first months? Because we do know that, you know, marriage is a growing process like that you learn as you go you go yeah right mm. but if i were to say right now that i am going to focus on my preparation being the fruits of the spirit yeah me working on myself yeah i believe that would be something good yes and because you had got the training beforehand mm -hmm. how did that you know just make marriage maybe a little easier to be honest i don't think it made it easier it just um is being aware was good mm -hmm. but the practicality was mm -hmm. very difficult although i was aware that 
you need to display character you need to forgive you need to love you need to do all these things mm. being aware is one part of the story but actually applying <laughs> that is very difficult for you to apply it you need to be faced with those situations that are uncomfortable for you yeah. to show mercy you know what i mean mm. so yes it's good that i had the awareness but i can't say that it was easy to implement it did take years for me to come to terms with a lot of things mm-hmm. to understand my own character and understand my partner's character and you know be able to grow a really healthy relationship based on that so i do think coming in with the awareness is good but i think it's even greater when you're able to apply it you know there's no use in hearing the word of god and not applying it so it's really about the application that i feel like is more of importance and that takes time you just keep practicing you will fall short you know we all fall short of the glory of god but like it's just the practice and the condition of your heart that are you willing to actually go there are you willing to fine tune yourself so that you're better for yourself and for the relationship itself yeah i have one more i have one more question yeah I'm going to ask this question and then I'm just going to let Kathleen minister to you guys <laughs> however the Lord allows her to. Oh, God. But my question, now I actually forgot the question. What is the question, Jess? What is the question? What is the question? I forgot the question, friend. Yes, Holy Spirit, come through. <laughs> come through, Holy Ghost. I actually forgot the question. I actually forgot the question. So yeah, the question, mm-hmm. friend, how did you exercise those fruits? Like, give us an example because when I spoke about it in the previous video, I didn't really say much about mm-hmm. it. But give us like some of some examples of how you exercise that fruit. Okay, um, I'm trying to think of a really really practical example. Okay, here's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you're upset, sometimes you want to go to bed upset mm-hmm. and not speak to your partner. Part of exercising the fruit is not making sure you don't go to sleep, mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. speaking, yeah. which is a very difficult thing to do for people who feel like you hurt me, you're wrong, leave me alone. I can I'll decide when I want to talk to you. Mm-hmm. I might talk to you in a week. I might talk to you in a month. Leave me alone. So how I had to exercise that. Okay, so we decided just to stop so that there's no background noise and yes. Kathleen can just speak and everything. So yeah, friend, you were giving us some examples yeah so like a really good example friend that i can share is when like you know some people when they're upset they choose not to speak mm. like don't talk to me they'll ignore you they'll go to sleep with uh, with you know being angry and it will last for weeks mm. so how you can or how i exercised the these the fruit of the spirit in this area is that i would literally deliberately force myself to try and have conversations with my partner when things are not okay so that we don't go to sleep without mm-hmm, speaking mm-hmm, with each other mm-hmm. cuz you know sleeping when you're angry you can't even pray how are you going to pray when you're angry you know what i'm saying so i feel like that was one of the self con- one of the like self control and forgiveness that you have to force yourself to say mm-hmm. you know what we're going to have this conversation whether he apologizes or not we have to see each other's point of view and have the conversation so that we can go to sleep mm-hmm. in a clean slate. And then another one in terms of like gentleness and kindness, you know, because these are part of the fruit of the spirit. When you're angry, you mm-hmm. have to be very cognizant of what you say to the next person, you know? So you have to control yourself that my anger can't get me to a point where I start cursing at my partner or I start name dropping like oh you're just like that person mm, mm. or you start re- you know recording a record of wrongs like 2 years ago you did a b c mm, d mm. so those are all the things that we're not supposed to be doing so i think in our anger we need to just teach ourselves to still have the self control and the what's the word the patience you mm, know to mm. hear somebody out and that's very difficult you know but it it matters in that moment where it's heated mm-hmm. how are you responding mm-hmm. what are the words that you're sharing cuz words are what last forever a lot of marriages break because people were shooting nasty words at each other and it gets to a point where there's so many of those nasty words that were shared that now you get to a point where you're like you know what it's too bad i can't continue cuz all you do is keep you know bashing mm-hmm. me with your words so words are very important the word of god also says you know be slow to speak and slow to wrath 
but like quick to listen you know mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. a lot of it is around self control friend even in anger how do you control yourself when you're angry what are the things you allow your wo- your mouth to speak are you the type of person who picks up a phone and smashes someone with the phone cuz you're upset <laughs> or you bang dolls or you break glasses like it starts like that but those grow into mm. even bigger things that is not just a glass that you're smashing it's a car that you're going to bump it's a house that you're going to burn down you know mm. so i feel like um that's how you can practice or like exercise the fruit in your anger even with your in-laws you know i know a lot of people have issues with their in-laws when they go then it's like you constantly getting tested but it's about the patience mm. that you apply preach to yourself mm. before mm. you go there you say lord i need the patience mm. give me the kindness this requires give me the the spirit to serve that when you get there and you cook for them and you do whatever that you have to do do it from a kind heart mm-hmm. without even expecting anything in return okay. you know cuz you're planting seed mm-hmm. this is not just about you this is on assignment mm-hmm. sometimes you're the only jesus that those people in that family are going to know so take that opportunity to display the fruit mm-hmm. of the spirit mm-hmm. because 10 15 years later someone else might get saved but reference seeing Jessica's True. behavior mm-hmm. when she landed into this marriage. Mm-hmm. So we're constantly being ambassadors and I feel like we need to take that opportunity with all our hearts and not take it for granted yeah. and let yeah. yourself or let your flesh die uh to, you know, emotions so that you're able to display the best of Christ in you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Friend, um I'm reminded here that when when god was speaking to me about this right yeah what he said to me he says he said to me just because just because a marriage mm-hmm. is kingdom yeah it doesn't guarantee the success you of it yo right mm. and he said to me i have done my part by bringing you two together i have done my part by yeah. bringing both of you guys together yeah but now you have to do your part mhm and it is my spirit that will keep you guys together. Yeah. And it is the fruit of the spirit that will keep you guys together. Absolutely. Because he does something wrong to you. The way that you are going to react needs to come from the fruit of the spirit. Absolutely. He comes home late, you get upset. You fighting with him all the time is going to drive him away. Mm. But you using the fruit of the spirit, you know, mm. to speak to him or mm. even just to control yourself yeah. in that environment. Yeah. It is going to maintain him Absolutely. there. It is going to maintain the Holy Spirit mm. in that place. Mm. So when God said that to me, I I I took a look, friend. I took mm. a look of people that were good wives that cooked, that cleaned, mm. Mm. that took care of the children and all of that. Mm. I looked at them being good in that area and I saw how they were lacking the fruit. Mm. I saw how the husband would come home late and they would react to that. Mm. I saw how the husband would cheat. We're not mm. condoning cheating, yeah. but it happens Your in sub- in in some in some uh, marriages. Mm. It happens in kingdom marriages, marriages yeah. as well. Yeah. The way that they would react to that, mm. them speaking in wisdom, you know, them just seeking the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Mm. That would keep them together, but I saw that the good wife that looked good on the outside that mm. looked good with cleaning and everything taking care of the house taking care of the husband the children mm. because she lacked the fruit she wasn't able to sustain, sustain it, yeah. that marriage yeah. and then you get the other person that went into the marriage that didn't know how to clean mm. learned how to cook the food that the yeah. husband wanted but was solid in the spiritual gift in the spiritual fruits. Yeah. They knew how to react. They knew how to how to captivate their family, mm-hmm. their husband's family, their husband. They knew okay, my husband came home late instead of me. Nya, 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 nya. Let me be yeah. calm. Yeah. Let me speak in love. Yeah. Let everything that I do show love. Yeah. Oh yes, he went out and he cheated. Mm-hmm. When he comes back home, let me wait for the good time to mm-hmm. speak to him about mm-hmm. it. And if he says something, let me not throw words at him mm. you know to hurt him let me do everything by the fruit yeah, of the spirit absolutely and that's what god was saying to me that everything else is complimentary mm. but him bringing you two together him bringing you and your spouse together him putting the seal of kingdom marriage mm. will not guarantee that this marriage will last forever absolutely and what do we want we just want the title of 
oh, I am in a kingdom marriage? Or do we want the legacy of, mm. hey, I was in a kingdom marriage. I was mm. an example for my children. Mm. Now my children are also pursuing and seeking kingdom mm. marriage. This mm. is what they want. Yeah. And kingdom marriage isn't how good you are in bed. Yeah, no. Isn't how much food you can cook. Mm. Isn't how clean you can make your house. Yeah. But it is you bringing out the fruit of your maker of your creator of the one that brought you two together mm, mm. what makes us or what makes you and your couple a kingdom couple being in a kingdom marriage it is the fruit of the spirit is the fruit of our kingdom that we are showing to Amen. others people always say oh no kingdom marriage isn't about the pictures that we are taking isn't about us being the hot couple us being this and this and that but we sometimes fail to we fail to mention what is the kingdom marriage what mm. is kingdom marriage mm. what are we supposed to be putting out what are we supposed to be showing yeah. so i just want you friend just to from your experience just to speak a little bit mm -hmm. on that okay um i think you know i concur 100 percent with what you just said and so much is coming to me uh when you're speaking like that to say we look at the outer flesh a lot of the times and the satisfaction of the flesh, whereas God is looking at the condition mm -hmm. of our hearts. I think at the end of your life, what will matter is the quality of Christ that you displayed, um, not only in your marriage, but mm -hmm. all around. Today, we have there are so many people who have chefs in their homes, they have chauffeurs, mm -hmm. people have helpers in their homes. So those uh, earthly skills mm. are not as par paramount as they used to be in traditional marriages mm. where the woman was at home most of the time. So a lot of the times now, women spend a lot of time, you know, equally making money, mm. building businesses and growing their careers. And when you go back home, how are you displaying Christ, mm. Mm. you know, through your relationship? And believe it or not, people are always watching. Yeah. You know, if you are in a kingdom marriage, someone's always watching. The kids that visit your house over the holidays, mm. they reference that relationship, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. whether in a good light or in a negative light. So I think right now I just want to inspire uh, the women who would like to, you know, who are looking at getting married one day, even the ones that are in marriage. My inspiration to you is that spend time working on yourself. Spend time acquainting yourself with the spirit of the living God. I think that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. You have to align yourself to the to, to the fruit of the spirit. Because without character, you cannot make it in any relationship. No matter how prayerful you are. Mm. No matter how fasting you are. Mm -hmm. But what will sustain you is your ability to take care of the love that you have. That is investing in you know the kind words. The gentleness the goodness that you display the, your your ability to forgive and i'm not saying that you should be subjected to abuse no ways mm -hmm, i'm mm -hmm. just saying that for the moments that matter how are you showing forgiveness do you hold somebody's mistakes over their head mm -hmm. that they can't even go to sleep without you reminding them what they did to you three years ago mm -hmm. you know see yourself right now how do you respond to friends who have disappointed you that will tell you you know how you you, you respond to disappointment mm -hmm. even when your partner one day disappoints you so i just like us to really take some time to get to understand our current character and how we want to build it up to a place that we want it to look like Christ's character and the only way you're going to be able to identify the Christ-like character is to spend time in him mm -hmm. is to spend time in the word is to spend time fine-tuning yourself and when those opportunities to fine-tune yourself present themselves take them mm -hmm. when someone hurts you when your partner refuses to apologize and it's like bickering take that opportunity to say how do i display character in mm. this you know because how do you know that you're gentle if you didn't have to exercise gentleness mm. how do you know that you have kindness and goodness and self-control if you weren't put in a situation to display those qualities mm. Mm. so sometimes you know people are not just acting maliciously for no reason but take those opportunities to display the best of yourself yeah. and i think as equally as important it is to house those technical skills that make up a wonderful home but of paramount importance about raising you know the most important thing is about how do you get your character to a place that it glorifies mm. the living god because everything on our lives has to glorify god at the end of the day be it your career be it your marriage your children it needs to all the glory needs to go back to God and how we conduct ourselves mm -hmm. that you know you know the word also says that preaching is not always about words 
it's how you carry yourself mm-hmm. and how you conduct yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you can be the most beautiful person, have everything, but without character. And if you're not a tasteful person to be around, there's no way you can sustain a relationship or a marriage. So I just want to, you know, inspire us to say it starts with us. Mm-hmm. You know, what you bring into the relationship. What are you bringing into conversation? Yeah. What are you bringing into arguments? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you? Are you the resolver? <laughs> are you the one who sparks more of the fire? Do you yeah. do you make it bigger? You know, there are people who start a fire. Mm-hmm. Are you the one who dims it, mm-hmm. or are you the one who amplifies it? You yeah. know, you know, take stock of those things. Take stock mm-hmm. of the things that do you hold people's mistakes against them. You know, who are you when it comes to that? Do you actually, when you say, I want a clean slate, you want a clean, clean slate? slate. Yeah. Or it's because you're going to keep reminding the person about it. And being the bigger person is very difficult. It's a very difficult thing. And I, I always say, own it first. Own the fact that it is hard. And then make steps to start refining yourself. Yeah. To start refining yourself. And one step at a time, you know, yes. there's no destination to say, okay, now I'm perfect. You will never get there. Mm. It's just about constantly remaining at the feet of Jesus, begging with Jesus, you know, begging Jesus, Jesus, I need you more than I need life itself. I need you more than the very breath that I'm breathing. Mm-hmm. Because you know what? Without you, I cannot make it in marriage. Yeah. Because marriage is a God idea. It's a God inspired idea. Therefore we need him to be able to, you know, make it a success. So I just pray that we're all able, men included, mm. to work on our characters, to work on our ability to 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 grow our relationships in the God kind of way, you know, using the fruit of the spirit, using the character of God. And if you want to read more about it, I know I always uh, share uh, Galatians five twenty two, mm-hmm. where you can find all of those things that are in, that are packed up in there. And I think it's a journey to get there. It's a real journey, but it starts with the awareness, and then you're able to build those building blocks. Yeah. You're able to build those building blocks. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that is what you know. Um, I think the Holy Spirit has imprinted in my heart to be able to help women out there to mm-hmm. say sometimes it's not about stepping up as the world says a traditional woman mm-hmm. is or a just traditional wife is but i believe the perfect wife in god's eyes is the one who's able to display the fruit of the spirit is the one who carries a god-like character a gentleness like mm. no other mm. or goodness you know a forgiveness and endurance you know mm. these mm. sounds like oh my god it means i must always suffer as a woman no but actually when you display those you have more peace mm. you are the one who leaves from a place of stillness mm. that not everything is emotional emotions yeah. are good but managing them is the most important thing yeah so, yeah uh, and friend like we were speaking before mm-hmm. we actually started recording yeah we were speaking about how I had heard my sister-in-law actually say that in marriage, you need to choose happiness over reasoning. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And being honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> you girl, hard yeah. thing to do. It is hard for me. And I've realized that it was hard because um, a few years back in my child years, yeah. I was abused, right? Mm-hmm. I was abused. And... Right after that, I think I told myself that I need to stand up for myself, right? Mm. Not allow anyone to say anything, not allow... Because, like, when... Because, you know, when you're abused, people do whatever they want to you when you keep quiet. Mm. So, I was like, no, I need to... Rise up and stand up for myself. Talk. I need to. What's next? And I... And after hearing this reasoning that you need to choose happiness over reasoning, Mm. I was like, a lot of the times I choose reasoning <laughs> because i want you to see that i am right. right i want you to see that if someone messed up if it's me cool because like i don't have a problem with saying sorry yeah my problem is when the other person can't say sorry yeah. the problem is taking the bullet for the other person <laughs> when knowing like hey you were the one shooting and now you want me to take the bullet for yeah. you so when she said that and as we spoke about that i was like lord like (laughs) your girl yeah i need to reason but how important is happiness over reason it's so important because you don't want to lose the quality of great relationship Mm. because you just want it to be right you don't want to just always want to be right you want to be right at the cost of what Mm. The, you know what's the cost of you yeah. being right all the time you know and sometimes god gives us the grace and he will give you the grace mm. at the right time mm. uh to be able to 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 
to help somebody in their weaknesses or just to be there for somebody else mm-hmm. you know when they um they are feeling weak but mm-hmm. i see it as a grace yeah. it's actually grace to be able to say you know what it's not my fault but i'll take the bullet that's yeah. grace because yeah. it's not it's not an easy thing to do. to do it's grace but at the end of the day my prime uh reasoning around that is um what's the cost mm. you know what is the cost of you being right for our relationship mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and people mirror each other mm. if your partner always wants to be right and you're the one always taking the bullet at some point he has a conscious he has mm. the holy spirit in him mm. at some point he's going to say you know what actually it's me yeah it's me and i'm sorry but someone has to start but if you're always bickering at each other nobody wants to take the floor then it's hostile in the home mm. you, you know is that the cost of you being right creating yeah. a hostile environment where people don't even speak to each other mm. you know mm. so mm. sometimes take the bullet it's okay especially when you like you weigh the options mm. like you know i always say to my partner to my husband pick your battles mm. like you need to learn to pick your battles because then when you're supposed to actually get angry people are not going to take you seriously, seriously because you're always angry it's like oh you just fight about everything yeah. but if you pick your battles you say oh this doesn't need my attention it's just a sock mm. i can put it in the basket like really mm. he missed five calls his phone was off you know what his phone was off and actually take it that his phone was mm-hmm. off you know what yeah. i'm saying and sometimes you just have to give people the benefit of the doubt that when you know you should have levels of anger there should be levels of what makes me angry mm. not mm. everything should, should be make... warrant yeah you know discomfort not everything should warrant I'm not going to talk to him for the next three weeks mm. then when does he know when he's actually really messed up yeah. because everything gets you upset you mm. know what I'm saying mm. so I just feel like it's important very important to choose happiness over being right and to just weigh your options to say is it worth it just because he didn't put his shoes away do I have to make a noise when mm. he comes back from a very bad day at work for mm. all you know he just got a retrenchment letter mm. or something really mm. devastating mm. happened and there you are You don't put your shoes in the cupboard. <laughs> Who do you think yeah. I am? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, look, if you're tired, leave the damn shoes there. It's not yeah. going to be like the end of the, the world. world. When yeah. you have energy, put them put away. Because I used to create hostility because I like a clean house. You know, my house is super clean. I like a clean house. I like my rugs white. I mm. want my curtains white. So, like, if he would dare to spill something... or like dare to leave his shoes lying around i would be so upset and he's like but dude this is my home mm. how am i how can i not be myself in my own home because i'm scared my wife is going to tell me i spilled something on her rug mm. this is our home please you just need to stop it and i had to actually have the conversation to myself and i'm like who's going to die if yeah. the shoes are not in the cupboard you <laughs> no know one. nobody my kids need to grow up in a home where they know that you pack away but when it's time to play let them play, let them play. when they're done they put their stuff away so it's a lot about that compromise and that constant communication and that constant introspection to say how far am i taking this mm-hmm. how crazy am i being about this and where you have to do a little better do a little better yeah. you know yeah so yeah, yeah. I'm reminded, friend, that when we became friends, we had a lot in common. <laughs> Boy, especially, like, like um, colors, clothing, not so much. But yeah. when it came to our character, we were very alike. We were very alike, yes. right? And, God, and from an early age, God had always told me, um, Katli is like an Elizabeth, right? Yeah. Katli is like your Elizabeth. Yeah. So I knew whenever I did something wrong uh-huh. or whenever I wanted to be right, yeah. I knew I could call Katli and Katli would be there by my yeah, side. Like, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, 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 we're not doing this. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But when I saw her in her element of marriage, I started seeing certain things change. Yeah. I started seeing that the girl that was like, they're hyping me up like when a boyfriend said something like no 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 yeah, no yeah. we're not apologizing we're yeah. not doing this no <laughs> yeah. no no she wasn't that person anymore yeah. she was that person of no just yeah. like you need to be understanding work on your stuff and i'm like no there's no working on my stuff <laughs> it's yeah not it's not me it's him <laughs> and right. i saw you know the transition and i saw the change mm. and when i look at you today even with the things that i still struggle with Hmm. I can look at you and I can say, you know what? My friend is my Elizabeth. Like God yeah. had always said that if God was able to change her, if mm. God was able to work in her, yeah. then there is still hope for me. Absolutely. Then God can do the same thing for me. And I'm still a work in progress, friend. I feel like there's so much I need to learn, but it's always about being open to learning. Mm-hmm. And I think my husband has a very different character to mine, so that forced <laughs> me. 
yeah. <laughs> to, to be better. But I thank God for that. Had mm-hmm. it been not, that's why I say I believe it's a kingdom marriage because ever since you. I've been with him, he's challenged me for the mm-hmm. better. I'm so much better. I like who I've become yes. as opposed to like how I was in the start. You know, mm-hmm. same for him. He likes who he's becoming as opposed to how he was in the start, you know. So I feel like the right person will bring those characteristics mm-hmm. out of you. And also sometimes you need the practical environment for you to exercise, exercise it, it. Mm-hmm. and achieve those goals, yeah. you know, because Sometimes when it's a lot of theory, it's good. But like theory is coupled with the practicality mm. for you to say, great, I've achieved it now. What's the next, uh, uh, you know, step I mm. need to take? So I feel like it's, it's literally by grace, friend. And I don't that I would speak like this, like 10 years ago. I was like, what? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Never. But now, by God's grace, I'm so grateful for the experiences that, that have made me better and that have made me even a better friend. Mm-hmm, I feel mm-hmm. like I'm able to manage my friendships better. Yeah. I'm able to manage even my my family relationships mm-hmm. better because of, you know, the fruit of the spirit and having character and really working on myself. So, friend, and before we go, yeah. If someone uh, would want to reach out to you to speak to you, <laughs> something like that are you open to it for sure uh for sure you can obviously drop me an email i do have a personal email maybe jess will share it yeah on i'll here. put it on the link yeah and also i don't know you know it's so crazy that people are following me on youtube it's the funniest thing in the world and i'm just like i don't even have anything on there <laughs> like, i don't know what to do but yeah unfortunately i don't have social any media. social media but jess will um share my email, email address and i'm obviously you know i'm so open to share sharing i think kingdom marriages we need more of those we need more kingdom living we can only influence a system if we're different from it Mm -hmm. but if we adapt to a worldly system then we're all the same Same. you know so i i'm so proud of you friend for how fearless you are (laughs) in like even though they eat me alive (laughs) (laughs) no but you're literally in the will of god i always say if you're in the will of god you will have opposition if you're in the same direction as the devil honey he's never gonna have issues with you but if there's opposition it's because you're doing the right thing so keep going we love you i love you and i'm so proud of you and i just love seeing what you have done with this with this talent that God has given you and this gift that God Amen. has given you Amen. it's so beautiful Amen. thank you Bazi <laughs> <laughs> now we're having our moment so now we're gonna go so I love you guys and I'll speak to you guys soon